Hey Shakers, we're here with Gary Gessler, the co-founder of Cloud Elements. Gary is an early stage sales and marketing evangelist focused on building fast growth software as a service companies, SaaS companies. Gary, thank you for joining the Handshake and Holmes you video series. Thanks, Matt. Really appreciate it. So we're going to talk to Gary about co-founders, co-founder relationships, and how to build your team. If you're an entrepreneur looking to build your team or looking for the right co-founder, this is the right video for you. So Gary, what, what would you tell an entrepreneur who's looking for a co-founder? Well, uh, a wise friend of mine told me many years ago that the only type of ship that doesn't float is a partnership. <laughs> and that always you know, stuck to me. And I actually, some of my earlier ventures, I uh, attempted to do it alone, solo. And um, I didn't work well that way. It's, uh, it's scary. Uh, you're only as good as, as smart as you are in the area that you are. And typically to build a successful company, especially a, a internet company, technology company, software company, you have to have a number of very smart founders that are smart in different areas such as sales, such as you know technology, such as products, such as product development. Um, and so my last uh, five or six ventures have all had, had founders and some have worked out pretty well, and some have crashed and burned, but it's, it's a lot easier. Um, it's a lot more fun when you have founders. It's not easy to find the right type of founders. You know, it's uh, probably as uh, important, if not more challenging, than finding a, a spouse, a wife, and getting married because you're going to spend more time with your founders than you do with your, with your spouse. So it's uh, it's very important, you know. There's even uh, founder dating, you know, sites out there uh, to facilitate meeting the right type of founders. Great, great. So shakers, I think it's pretty safe to listen to Gary that it's a great idea to take your time, look at your skill set, and look at your co-founder's skill set before you marry your co-founders or launch your business. So. Point number two, uh, Gary, how did how did that look for all the co-founders at Cloud Elements? Yeah, good question. Um, I actually met, there's always, in, in any startup, there's usually one founder who comes up with the idea and then goes out and, you know, gets some other co-founders to join in. Sometimes, you know, it's three or four guys sitting around a room and, you know, come up with this idea and say, hey, let's all be founders. But typically, it's one person with the idea and then that person goes out and finds and fills the, uh, the missing skill set and that's what happened with cloud elements mark genie our uh, founder and one of my co-founders our ceo he uh, he really came up with the idea through two of our other co-founders who had their own consulting api integration business and these guys are world-class api uh, engineers and architects and they uh, went out on their own with their own consulting practice and they had a line out the door of enterprise companies that needed you know world-class integration consulting these guys excellent you know world-class uh, architects really bad sales guys and the light bulb went off it's like mark mark said hey if these guys can go out and get this much business just think if we could combine forces and really you know productize it you know come up with a great brand name and and really you know market it correctly and, and go after the need of Accelerating integrations is what we what we do. So uh, so Mark got our two other founders, Vinit and Atul, to join on. Then he was looking for a fourth founder around the sales and marketing space, and that had experience launching early stage uh, SaaS companies in that space. And we happened to meet through uh, uh, the Founders Institute and really through an introduction from uh, Jim Franklin, the CEO of of SynGrid at the time. So it's it's very interesting for those of you that don't know what the Founders Institute it is. It's the largest uh, accelerator in the world, about 60 locations across the globe. And it's designed for entrepreneurs, many time, first time entrepreneurs that don't want to quit their day job and uh, risk everything and start and accelerate their own business in their uh, free time in the evenings and weekends over a 16 week period. And that's how we met, also Matt, and uh, excited that uh, it's just amazing the power of startup networking. So Shakers, conclusion number two ties back to our video with Dr. J.R. Dameron, and that is 
just like Cloud Elements found two co-founders that had previous experience in the industry that they launched their business in, that's something you should look for with your co-founders. Find folks who have experience working in the industry if you don't already have it. So Gary, let's go ahead to point number three, which is, you know, you guys had the founder, Mark Genie, um, the two co-founders with experience in the yes. industry you guys are in, yes. and yourself, the go-to-market co-founder. Yes. Four co-founders. And you guys have been in business two years now. Uh, how's that working out? It's working out really good. Uh, we're, we're blessed to have had a, uh, a great founding team that's been able to grow the company from you know four of us to now 35 people. We're, uh, we're based here at Industry, which is uh, in an area of Denver called Rhino, River North District. And we have about a 3,000 square foot uh, office space that was custom built with a cool loft and everything. We're uh, in, a, uh, in, in an environment that is very conducive for software development, sales and marketing and everything. But uh, you know, one thing I wanted to say about you know, founders, you have to be able to have founders in the beginning that uh, ideally can go a, wa a ways without a while without a paycheck. That's very important. Um, and then founders that agree to work equally, you know, from the beginning to, you know, two years in, which has worked out very well. Uh, but the other thing is the founders in the beginning have to be willing to do everything. Like, uh, even though I'm a sales guy, uh, Mark, our CEO, put me in charge with setting up our benefits program mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with, with Trinet and, you know, payroll deductions and, you know, all that type of stuff and, and all the, the legal forms that you need, you know, for your filings and all that type of stuff. I'm the guy that would, you know, run the checks to the bank and open the bank account, work with the attorneys and all that type of stuff. And if you know me, that's not a area of strength for me. but. Whenever you're starting a company, you have to share lots of different things. You know, I was the guy going to Costco, getting all the drinks and you know, food and snacks and uh, caffeine and, and sugar for all the developers and everything. And you know, Mark is out, uh, you know, doing the interviewing and hiring and helping, you know, onboard um, our uh, our developers. In the meantime, you know, taking a role as product management. But as a company grows, the co-founders, the I. There, there's no one that can do everything. That's the reason you need employees and other co-founders. But the idea is, is, as the company scales, you hand off parts of your responsibility that you are not world class at, or you, you do not like doing. So, uh, about a year ago, we hired a VP of sales, world class software, Silicon Valley enterprise sales leader that's built huge teams and you know, uh, sold huge deals, and so that was taken off my plate. You know, Mark's taken a lot of things off his plate. We've recently hired an HR person, office manager. Uh, we've hired a uh, sort of a customer service, customer success uh, manager. We're in the process of hiring a product leader. So, and then the other two founders can focus specifically on delivering the product and continuing to scale development. So it's, it's very important that the founders have the ability to know when to sort of hand off those responsibilities and hire the, the best world-class talent that's available, which we've had great success with doing in Denver. And we're really attracting, because of our success and our momentum, attracting world-class people uh, all over the world and uh, specifically from Silicon Valley that want to leave the valley and move to Denver and uh, work in cool places like industry and you know ski all the powder that we've got on the weekend and everything. So uh, we've been very blessed to have a uh, excellent co-founding team that has the ability to scale it for the next five years as well. Thanks, Gary. So, Shakers, there's, there's three points you can see that, that Gary's reaping the success of by being careful of picking his co-founders. Part of their success is thanks to them as co-founders being willing to wear different hats. And they also all had a runway. They, they were all willing to be the last to get paid and, um, and take on the most risk. So one more takeaway um, from Gary's third point is that you're going to need to know when to pick and hire world-class employees that can take over the responsibilities that, that co-founders were previously doing. That way the co-founders can keep doing what, what they're world-class at. So um, 
those are our three points. We hope it helps. Uh, check out the links in the descriptions, and thank you guys very much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Matt. Cool. Yeah.